over a year ago, President Barack Obama became the first sitting U.S. president to put his two feet on the Arctic, to put his two feet on the thawing permafrost of the Arctic, to visit the remote villages and towns along the Arctic coast. I was actually really surprised as an American that no previous American president had been up to the Arctic because after all, thanks to Alaska, we are an Arctic country. But the higher meaning of the president's visit is that the looming crisis in the Arctic is a tangible preview of the looming crisis of the global condition. For President Obama, the Arctic is an augury. It's a forecast, it's a preview of what the most important self-interest we all have in this will experience if we don't do something about climate change. And that is the, the lives of our, of our children and of our children's children. It's the next generation, the future generations, that will feel the full impacts of the changes that we can bear witness to now in the Arctic. And that's why we held this first ever White House Arctic Science Ministerial. Because the Arctic is changing, is, is warming up four times faster than anywhere else on Earth. And if there's one thing that we know, we have underestimated the acceleration of that change. What we are seeing now along the Arctic coastline is the basic parameters, the basic outlines of human society beginning to contract because of coastal erosion, sea level rise, erratic weather conditions. These are changes that we're going to see more and more of elsewhere. Why are they happening? What's next? That was the essence of bringing together 25 governments from around the world on the Arctic issue for two days to see what it is that we can do together to build a collective response as the most effective response. That was the goal of the ministerial. And I would point your readers or your listeners to the White House website to take a look at the joint statement signed by all 25 governments because it truly is a commitment in terms of certain principles governing development in the future of the Arctic, one, and two, a very comprehensive White House fact sheet that was issued on the day of the ministerial listing line by line the combinations, the alignments, the joint efforts that we will be to doing together, the United States, Italy, Poland, Spain, Japan, China, India, all these different countries participated in the ministerial and the goal was to work t together through new and, and shared combinations that brings together a range of engagement and a range of expense. Right. We are very proud of our chairmanship of the Arctic Council and we feel that we have zeroed in on things that bear on people's lives. I think that that's important when you work through international fora, not to get lost in bureaucracy or to get lost in, you know, diplomaties, but to zero in on things that matter to people's lives. So you take a look at some of the things that we focused on during our chairmanship, looking at the telecom and communications context of the Arctic, which needs to be modernized, is something that we have zeroed in on. We have looked at the health context of the Arctic, including, for example, mental health and suicide prevention. That is a, a very important priority when it comes to the health of the people of the Arctic. And so we have zeroed in on initiatives pertaining to that. Um, we are going to drive our chairmanship until the very end uh, next spring and then hand it over to the Finns. And it's important to remember that, you know, this year in 2016, in fact, just a few weeks ago, we celebrated the 20th anniversary of the founding of the Arctic Council. In the last year, in the last 20 years, the Arctic has ascended so much as an issue, 
in people's minds and as a policy focus for countries around the world. And I think that we who are members of the Arctic Council should be proud that we have worked in a way that has brought people together on the Arctic issue at a time of turbulence elsewhere in the world, that we continue to cooperate and work agreeably in the Arctic Council, I think deserves note. That their changes are occurring at the local level and are having global reach. As they say, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. That's like that phrase about Las Vegas. What happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. Um, well, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. Um, I learned that most directly when I was serving as the United States ambassador to Sweden. When I went up to the Arctic more than 10 times as ambassador, and I was able to bear witness to the crisis of one man, a man named Nila Inga, a young Sami leader in northern Sweden. The Sami people are Sweden's indigenous people in the Arctic area. And the crisis was nothing less than the end of the society that he helps lead, and that is of the Sami people. I traveled with him to remote locations to bear witness to the impacts of climate change on his culture. And the central organizing activity of Sami society is reindeer herding. And reindeer herding, he told me, will cease to occur in any meaningful way within one generation. Why? Because of the changes in the snow um, composition with more and more ice layers, the reindeer cannot sniff the pasture through the snow. So helicopters have to deliver hay to the reindeer um, during the winter. Ticks, all people know what ticks are. Ticks were never found in Sweden's Arctic area. Now they are all over the reindeer in the Arctic area. And ticks are disease and virus vectors um, that, can, that can harm things well, well more than reindeer. So you see at a local level how an indigenous culture faces its end, and that is a lesson that should not be lost on us, because our society too will be impacted by what is happening in the Arctic. Um, because what is happening there is a preview to what we are looking at all of our coastal areas, whether in coastal the United States, Miami, or Bangladesh, or Thailand, and other places. These are the places that will feel the impacts of climate change in terms of sea level rise and coastal erosion. We need to get in front of it. It's incumbent on us as a national security imperative. Thank you. Thank you.